Isn't it unbelievable? Um, uh, many of the reporters from QDQ in Brisbane um, have uh, homes that have been threatened. Uh, reporters very much involved in the story. Uh, not to make particular note of that, it's just how it is when a natural disaster happens. Uh, doing a terrific job for us, bringing all the latest, um, really putting us in the picture and, and hopefully you around Australia. Let's go back to Darren Curtis in the chopper now looking at iconic, what looks to me like iconic Suncorp Stadium. Darren, that area again uh, has been inundated, especially in the last 12 hours. Uh, yes, Kai, as you can see, Lang, Lang Park or the old or Suncorp Stadium now. Uh, the flooding water is all around it. Now we're just coming down, zooming into the Florex factory. Um, we've been told that the beer is okay. I did get a nasty, <laughs> nasty text message from a friend in New South Wales earlier who said that they're just scooping up and bottling it. And they're going to send it down to New South Wales for the state of origin. Well, I don't <laughs> think so, pal. The Forex factory will keep going. <laughs> The Forex man, he didn't get his feet wet today. He's got a few barrels wet maybe around the bottom there. That white little box you can see in the middle of the picture there, that is the guard tower. That is the, the, the guards that check the uh, vehicles coming in and out to make sure that some of the drivers aren't taking an extra barrel home with them. That is up to the roof there, right there. That, so that's high enough to reach the top of a semi-trailer. That's the roof of the guard tower at the Forex building. Don't worry those Forex lovers right across Queensland. And I'm sure there's many of you in New South Wales now. That beer is okay. It's going to continue brewing. And as soon as that water goes out, there's going to be convoys of trucks, V-doubles, delivering that across Queensland. I wonder also, Darren, if you can take us across to um, uh, the former Lang Park until uh, corporates came along and now Suncorp Stadium, um, the scene of uh, so many great state of origins, um, uh, rugby union matches as well. It's one of the great stadiums, I reckon, in the world. Uh, also, it was the scene of concerts recently. Um, I think you too, uh, Bon Jovi were there. Take a look at that. What's happening in there today? Yeah, Carl, we're just coming over the top of Lang Park now, and um, again, it's live TV, so we may have to move if we get some air traffic there. But there is the surface, the stadium set up of Lang Park, uh, Suncorp Stadium, as we all know it now, due to the sponsors. There's the soccer goal set up. They were going to play, a, um, I think, a, a Lions game there. Have a look at that. That is flooded. There's flood debris right up into the seating area there. And uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens to the surface of there. The Lang Park curators are fantastic guys. They are geniuses at, at getting this surface up and running. They had specially built grass. I'm sure they've planned for this and they've factored it in. They may, in fact, have a scheme where they might come in and just skim off all, all that grass and they'll get in some specially made turf that will slot back in over, the, over that area and, and start knitting in to provide a, a fantastic surface. Now, we don't want to be flippant. But, geez, you've got to have a little bit of a smile every now and then because I'd love to see a New South Welshman come up there and play an Origin game in a set of flippers at the moment. I think they were running like <laughs> they were in flippers last year. <laughs> well, you're causing all sorts of trouble for us uh, in New South Wales, but uh, probably bringing a smile to many dials across Queensland. Uh, probably a good thing, too, that uh, this is happening outside of the actual rugby league season uh, with the Brisbane Broncos using that, um, that field as their home. It'll give at least the curators some time to get um, that all fixed up in time for the NRL season, uh, which will kick off uh, in a couple of months' time. Um, Darren, also I'm hearing that the William Jolly Bridge, the Victoria Bridge, are not far from there and the uh, the go-between bridges, that they are all closed this morning. Um, we can stay on those shots or we can move off to the bridges, but uh, is there anything you can tell me about those? Can you confirm that? Uh, at the moment, I can see uh, no traffic going over the go-between bridge or, in fact, any of the bridges now that I look down there. Uh, there's no train traffic, of course, going across there either. There obviously must be some uh, checks and balances that need to be done in that area to make sure that the uh, engineers get in and have a look at them and make sure they're structurally sound. They did cop a bit of a, a pulvering yesterday with all that uh, equipment coming down that was smashing into those pylons. I'm sure they just want to check them to make sure they're right before they get uh, traffic flowing backwards and forwards because as soon as they do open them, Brisbane, Brisbane will want to get back to work. Brisbane will want to get in and start helping each other. They want to get back across the river, so they want to make sure it's right. And uh, going back to Suncorp Stadium there, yeah, we were having a bit of a joke, guys. Uh, it isn't. There is so much gloom, really, around in some of those suburbs. We're just having a bit of a joke. It was just a bit of fun, guys. Don't take it to heart. <laughs> it, uh, that, that stadium is going to be up and running. It will be fine. And uh, I'm sure the people of 
of uh, Queensland are going to love to see that stadium up and running again, and so will every sports fan. It's one of the premier sports venues in, in Australia. Gee, that's badly flooded, that, that, um, that right-hand turn, that sharp right-hand turn as you go into South Bank, and a little bit of traffic on the water there. A lot of um, uh, police boats have been going past, emergency service vehicles going past, but that South Bank area, one of the key areas um, of concern this morning, um, there are a lot of hotels over there, new development over there, um, some really great restaurants. It's, I've done an amazing job in, in rebuilding that, um, so they're going to have a big, pretty big clean-up there as well. Um, uh, so, some areas of concern still this morning, mate, and uh, it's subsiding, but it's not really going down very quickly. That's the issue. Yeah, Carl, have a look at these areas here. This is Taringa, the back of Tawong, right on the bend of the river. Now, we'll zoom in there and have a look at some of these apartment complexes. They have quite a significant buffer normally between themselves at the river level and their homes. Look how high that water's come up, right into those apartments there. There would be stacks of uni students that would normally be living in those apartments normally. Um, that is quite a significant disruption that's going to happen there. And of course, right in the bottom of this area where the water's started to slow, they're getting some of the debris floating in there. They're getting pontoons, they're getting bits of boat, they're getting bits of homes even. I'm sure even we saw some of those mobile homes up at Goodner earlier. I'm sure some of that debris is going to float down the river here eventually. There's a tractor tyre. Uh, that's, that's spun into there as well. Uh, we'll have a look just on the bottom left-hand side of the um, of the screen here now. Sorry, over to the right, the right. Sorry, we'll go over to the right, zoom in there, and uh, just a little bit further down. Um, got a fantastic camera operator. Look at all that. That's the stuff that's just spewing off the river, and has found itself a little uh, easy pocket. There's a boat in there. Now, if you know the registration of that boat, now you know where it is. You can come and get it. Um, there's all sorts of debris tucked in there. There's gas cylinders, there's chairs, there's furniture, there's clothing. Um, we're also seeing here, look, there's a, a, a pontoon with a vessel still attached to it. Uh, that is going to be another significant missile when it gets back into the flow of the river. That is part of the reason why they are keeping probably the bridges down in Brisbane closed at the moment because there are still these large pieces of debris coming down and are hitting with such great force they may, may risk some of the you know, structural integrity of the bridges, and I'm sure the engineers want to make sure they're right at the moment before they open them up again, Carl. Staying across things from the air, Darren Curtis, thank you very much for the moment. We'll leave it there with you, but we will come back to you in a couple of minutes' time. I think a lot of people waking up this morning would feel very much reminded of uh, 1974. Uh, Georgie Gardner joins us now again. Georgie? Yeah, absolutely, Carl. This vision we are watching this morning, absolutely staggering. I guess on a positive note, uh, the Brisbane River, uh, the, the, the peak for the Brisbane River uh, this morning has been lower than the 1974 floods. The only difference being, of course, that Brisbane these days is a much bigger city. We're going back to refuel. 1974 declared the worst flooding of the century. By late January, almost every river in the state was spilling over. Homes evacuated, cars submerged, people in disbelief. And they didn't want to leave, although their beds were underwater several hours later. 14 lives were lost, the damage bill around $200 million. Business premises in five city blocks lost thousands of dollars as water up to eight feet deep spread up Elbert, Edward and Creek Streets. Those memories still haunting so many. 1974 I saw how it rise and I remembered the people who left it too long. 74, you wouldn't have thought you would have ever had to live through another one. No, I told everybody I'd been through the, the, the flood in my life. 37 years ago, more than 6,500 homes were flooded. Today, that figure is expected to reach nearly 20,000. Ipswich has also been inundated, with the Bremer River reaching similar levels to 1974. This time, though, we have technology on our side. We have a total capability of 25 helicopters. Uh, one of those is a Queensland Fire and Rescue helicopter, which has... Uh, live stream camera capability so it is uh, doing aerial uh, surveillance over Brisbane and streaming footage live back into the control room here. Good example of uh, a capacity that was just not available 
to emergency workers in 1974 and it's making a big difference to our ability to get out there and respond. But with a larger population in 2011, the destruction will be far worse. Both the city of Ipswich and the city of Brisbane are vastly different places than they were in 1974. So many more people are expected to be affected by this event, even though the water levels may be relatively similar. The clean-up bill is expected to reach in excess of $5 billion and it's come with an even greater cost to human life. Queensland has already faced some dark days and there are dark days still ahead. But Australia is standing with you, working with Queensland to help Queensland through this crisis. And we will be there shoulder to shoulder, not only for the days ahead, but for the many months of recovery and rebuilding to come. Yeah, a graphic reminder there of the devastation caused back in 1974.